Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony Kevin Love is joining the Heat. Would you ever move to Miami? I'm Tony Kornheiser, no. Too close to Levitard. Oh. I can already feel his body heat here. I don't want that, no. <laughs> you used no. to threaten to move to Boca, but you have not threatened that, I'd say, in five to 10 years. What happened? Yeah, yeah, on my side of the street, we always move to Boca. That's sort of the okay. end. I, I'm not ready to do it just <laughs> yet. End. Welcome to PCI, Goodness. boys and girls. In today's episode, the Bulls shut down Lonzo Ball. North Carolina is struggling. And is Tiger or LeBron more likely to win a title this year? But we begin today with Victor Wembanyama, the stone-cold lock number one pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Wembanyama, who is currently playing in France, told Brian Windhorst and Jonathan Gavoni of ESPN that he welcomes playing for whichever team drafts him. When Banyama said, quote, there is no wrong team. I am not concerned. There is no bad organization. I never tell myself I won't like to go there, unquote. Wilbon, do you agree with Wembanyama that there is no wrong team? Far more important than agreeing with him, I admire him. I like his spirit. We always talk, you like to pick out guys who are complainers and you rip them for complaining or never being happy. This kid is saying, yeah. hey, just bring it up. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. And most of the teams, particularly the bottom five, maybe Charlotte's the only one, we've seen these other teams, Houston and, and, and Detroit, we've seen them draft people at the top and get to the finals. They've done it. I mean, they weren't under the same ownership. I'm not going to call it the same management, but it's been the same franchise in most cases. I mean, I guess, you know, New Orleans hasn't done that if they're going to be one of those teams that figures to be in the lottery. Even a team like the Bulls, which was last year in the playoffs, could sink to that level. We've seen them draft in the top three and get to the finals over the lottery right. era, which is basically 1984 on. So, Tony, good for him that he's not whining and he's saying, I'm ready to come. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be well coached. I'm going to be surrounded by great yeah. players. Let's go. Good. Yeah, I'm going to take a slightly different point of view, but I'm going to personalize it. I'll bet Adam Silver is very happy to hear this from Wimbanyama. Yeah. And it is possible yeah. that Adam Silver believes that there are no bad teams and no organizations. But I will also say, if you inject Adam Silver with truth serum, what he is likely to say is, I wish there was a way to get this kid to New York or L.A. I don't think he wants him in an outpost like Orlando. I don't think he wants him in a place like Houston, where the owner doesn't seem to know what he's doing. Now, he's very happy, Mike, that he's not going to deal with a John Elway or Eli Manning situation. The kid's going to play wherever he's drafted, and he's happy about that. But where does he really want him to be drafted? You can, you can look at some teams. Detroit, for example. Detroit was great with Chuck Daly and then with Larry Brown. They haven't won a playoff series since, I'm going to go for a while, since 2008, I believe. I, I would say... I would say that of the bottom five teams, and there's no glamour city here, it's Charlotte and it's Houston and San Antonio. it's Detroit and it's Orlando and San Antonio, San right? Antonio, yeah. I would say San Antonio is the best place. And the reason is because Greg Popovich runs a great organization and because European players have come there and thrived, like Tony Parker and great Manu point. Ginobili. It's That's the best point. place. Second, yeah. be second best place, I think, even though the team is lost, is Charlotte, because Michael Jordan owns a team. That's the bet you want to make. You want to bet on Popovich. You want to bet on Michael Jordan. The others are not nearly as attractive. This kid's going to make a team better. You know, what's interesting, Mike, is that the three best European players right now, Antetokounmpo and Luka and the kid in Denver, I'm blanking on his name, Jokic. Jokic, Jokic, uh-huh. They don't play in basketball cities. They don't play in basketball cities. It's odd to me. It that's why it's okay. Real quickly, Tony, just to underscore that, let's see. Orlando did okay when they had Shaquille O'Neal, didn't they? Huh? Houston did okay did with Akeem Olajuwon, didn't did they? They, did they, they, got did to they the win finals. a title? They got to okay. the finals. The New York okay, Knicks, well, where you want him to go, haven't been to the finals since you had a big red afro. It's a long time ago, the New York Knicks, and that would be great for the <laughs> yeah. league. Be great for the league. Uh, we move on uh, to your team. Uh, the Chicago okay. Bulls announced today that Lonzo Ball, who has not played at all since a year ago January, will not play the rest of this season. 
Ball has persistent pain in his left knee. He cannot run on a consistent basis. Well, Bond, how do you react to today's announcement about Lonzo Ball? Tony, we knew this was coming because if you're a Chicagoan and you're following the Bulls, you're following this every day for over a year. When Lonzo Ball went out of the lineup, you know where the Bulls were? Lonzo Ball last year shot like 42% from three. He was like second in the league in made open jumpers. He passed. He was a great defender. He was a good organizer. He was sort of the quiet leader of that team. You know where the Bulls were? It was in a seed we like to call one. They were the one seed yeah. in the East. And since he's gone out, I think they're 11 games under 500, and they're going nowhere now. And I don't think any of us thought outside the team, outsiders, that Lonzo Ball was going to make that kind of difference. But he did, Tone. The results say he did, and now he's, he's gone. We don't know if he'll play again. We don't know how this is going to turn out. And so it's very depressing considering where the Bulls were last year, the way the Metropolis felt about that team and the energy it played with and how fun they were yeah. to watch and root for and where they are now, Tone, it's a, it's a three, it's a 180. So I'm going to go a little wider here. Lonzo Ball okay. came into the league as one of the most celebrated and recognized and anticipated players of the last 20 years, even though he was drafted number two. He played one year at UCLA, and he led the league in assists, led the country in assists at that point. And the reason people were excited is because his father, LeVar Ball, talked about him all the time to the point of becoming annoying. Nobody could be as good as LeVar Ball said Lonzo Ball was. He's drafted by the Lakers. In hindsight, it's the wrong team to go to. He's drafted by Magic Johnson, immediately compared to Magic Johnson. He's not Magic Johnson. He Nobody's couldn't bad. shoot. He could pass, he could defend, but it was almost merciful when he went to New Orleans. Mike, he's played in 45, he's missed 45% of the games he's eligible for over three teams. He became a much better shooter. He became a much better player, but he's not there. My word would be sad. This makes me I sad. Am. And I look at him like I, I look at Tua. I wonder if they've chosen the right profession for themselves, yeah. if their bodies will let them play, right? Yeah. Yes, Tony. I mean, but look, I, I don't even remember him being in New Orleans. I don't care about that. I don't care about him being the Lakers. I care about my team. And with my team, let me say again one more time to make sure you didn't forget. They were the one seed. As, as great as, as, as the other players were on that team, and you've got two all-stars, otherwise, actually three, if you count Vucevic on that team. Zach Levine, who's not getting $215 million. And, and I, Tony, he made it go. He was the engine. One yeah. seed. He matured. He's not even, what is he, 25? You're right. And now this is, yes, right. it's sad. I, Depresses the hell out of me considering I, yes. what has happened to my he team. He came into the league under enormous pressure. I mean, I think there was damage done to him. And he rebounded very well, particularly in Chicago. Yes. He became yes, a really good player. And now, you, now you're now you right. Will he ever play? Will he ever play? Man. And then DeRozan, who I forgot to mention, I shouldn't because DeRozan is still an all-star. Let's move to college basketball, mercifully, where Kansas is rolling while North Carolina is wobbling. The two teams met in last season's title game, and while the defending champs are ranked third in BTCU last night, North Carolina has lost five of six, is struggling to 16 and 11 overall. After Sunday's loss yeah. to NC State, star Armando Baycott said he was, quote, stressed the hell out, close quote, about potentially missing the tournament entirely. Tone the heels with a preseason number one. Is it still reasonable to expect them to make a run? No, it's not reasonable at all. And it wasn't reasonable last year when they won six in a row and 11 out of 13 and include, from mid-February on, including beating Duke twice in very memorable games and getting all the way to the NCAA final. So we know it's been done, and technically it can be done again. But this team isn't as good as that team. That no. team at this point was 18-11. This team is 16 and 11. That team to that point was 10 and 5 in the ACC. This team is 8 and 8 in the ACC. They're not as good. You know, this has happened to Blue Bloods this year. Duke was the preseason number 7. They're unranked. Kentucky was the preseason number 4. They're unranked, but they're better than Carolina. Duke is 20 and 8 and Kentucky is 18 and 9. No, I mean everybody was thrilled 
when Carolina, they made them the preseason number one. You could not be more wrong at this moment. Yeah, and Tony, look, I, I spent the first X number of years of my life covering the ACC for the Washington Post. I get it. I know what it's like to be in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, when the Tar Heels are great. From, 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 from Michael Jordan on and James Worthy on through recent times, I, I know what that's like. I know how important they are to the landscape of college basketball, but I, I'm not going to dwell on this because college basketball's landscape has changed. First one and done, and now the transfer portal. And you don't need to be a blue blood yes. to make a run. You don't. Now, I mean, you may have to have a really savvy coach, and you may have to have other ingredients like a senior backcourt, and that may make a difference. Senior backcourt seems to always have made a difference. But you know what? Somebody else will make a run. And college basketball will be fine. I mean, we mentioned Kansas. That was a sort of a stirring, rousing game to watch last night. Tony, North Carolina could make a run. Because now all you need to do is find a little magic, maybe in your conference tournament, and all of a sudden you can yeah. win two or three games and get There's going, and Hubert Davis here, knows though. what he's doing. There's a subtext here. Hubert Davis is what? following Roy Williams. It's really hard yeah. to follow a great coach. Ask Matt Doherty about that. Go across, you know, to Durham and ask John Shire what it's like to follow somebody. You know, this is this is ask the people who follow John Thompson or John Wooden or Al McGuire because they didn't last long. Yeah, Nobody wants to follow Jim Beheim. This guy they want to follow the guy who follows Jim Beheim. Yes, but and Hubert he's got a Davis great contract. Won or close. Yes, and they gave him a great <laughs> contract, and it's a wonderful story. But this yeah. year isn't last year. No. Let's take a break. No, it's not. Coming up, should we expect more from Shohei Otani or Aaron Judge this season? And who's more likely to win a title this year, Tiger or LeBron? Now, that's a tall They subject. were number one in the preseason poll. Number Didn't one. Didn't you think that was a little ambitious? Didn't you think that was a little out, of, out yes. there a little bit? Well, they yeah. wanted to use the same picture as the Jordan mm -hmm. team, right? They wanted that cover that's right. shot. That's Have an eight. It's time for toss-up. Two men enter, one man leaves, finishes the show, and turns out the lights and begins his own darkness retreat. The dungeon of darkness. Uh, What's first? Toss-up. Rogers. More likely to win a title this year, Tiger Woods or LeBron James? The answer is Tiger Woods on one leg because he's going to have more chances at it. LeBron has this one chance. LeBron right now, I believe, is outside of the playoffs in a league where 13? 20 of the 30 teams make the playoffs. And if he gets into playoffs, yes, he has a chance. But I think you'd have to concede, Mike, it's a slim chance. Tiger Woods yeah. is going to go out there, and he's going to compete in the majors and maybe some other tournaments. And he doesn't have to worry that Anthony Davis will break his leg and not be able to play anymore. Because <laughs> it's, cool. it's all on. on him. He shot a 67 at Riviera, which shows he can be competitive. If he can walk 72, he's got a chance at Augusta, maybe a chance at L.A. Country Club in the U.S. Open, maybe a chance at, at Oak Hill in Rochester, New York, in the PGA. I mean, I don't like either of their chances, but I think because he has more time to swing the club than LeBron has to shoot the ball, I'll say it's Tiger. See, Tony, I, for a different reason, I'm going to say it's Tiger. I don't think the more chances helps him. I don't think that matters because I, I don't think Tiger is. He's Tiger. I get it. But he's not going to beat Rom and Finau and JT and Morikawa. And he, 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 that's not going to happen. Except one place, Augusta National. Tiger can win at Augusta. Yeah. LeBron yes, has to can. start. He's in 13th. There's only – somebody said the other day, oh, there's 30 games. There's, no, there's not. This is the final quarter of the season. Some teams have 20 and 21 games left. LeBron may have to go – the Lakers have, I think, 23 games left. LeBron may have to go 16 and 7 just to get in the playoffs. So, you yeah. know, it doesn't, it doesn't stand to reason. Tony, you're right. As much as I, you know, I want to see LeBron in the playoffs. I don't want to see LeBron outside the playoffs. I don't want to see that. But it's going to be so hard to get there. Tiger in Augusta, man, he's going to tee it up. And we're all going to sit there thinking That's on right. Thursday, got a chance. can he do this? Got a chance. Yeah, got a chance. What's next? Toss up. What's next? Who do you expect more out of this season? Shohei Otani? Or Aaron Judge. Oh, this is definitive. It's Shohei Itani. I mean, Aaron Judge had a great season last year. 
He had a milestone season. He hit more home runs, 62, than any Yankee ever, including Babe Ruth. He's not going to do that again this year. He's not going to ever do that again, I don't think. Shohei Otani is, is arrived at the same place the judge was last year, in a contract year, which propelled judge. Otani has that chance. I don't think he's going to accept any money from the Angels. I think he's going to have a, in terms of an extension, I think he's going to have a great year pitching and a great year hitting, and then he's going to sit back and wait for the offers. And offers are going to come from the richest teams, from the Mets, from the Dodgers, and from the Yankees, and they're going to offer to pay him a lot more than they're paying Aaron Judge. Yeah, Tony, I, you know, if Judge hits 48 home runs, isn't that a great year? I mean, let's think of yes. what happened with Roger Maris yes. coming off that year. I mean, it, so 48 home runs would be a great year. Otani, who I think hit 34 last year in a much bigger ballpark, Otani can go 38, 40 home runs and win between 12 and 16 games, and that's a greater yeah. year because, I mean, it's almost impossible – if Otani has a great year for anyone to have a greater year. Now, if Judge goes out there and hits 65, I'll be the first to say, oh, uh, my God, even I'll with that 240-foot yes. right field yes. porch. But I'm going to start stunned. this by saying Otani. I'm going to start it by saying Otani, too. too. That's it. Let's take one last break. Still to come, what will Patrick Beverly bring to the Bulls? Uh-oh. Yep, 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 Uh-oh. Yep, 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 Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He answers the question and himself. Of course he does. Tony's Nets, they traded their stars, but they're keeping their coach. I like their coach. I really do. I like the last coach. I think this coach has a better chance because the stars are gone. A better chance. You know, you can't good... Happy time, people. Happy 40th birthday yesterday, Justin Verlander. The future Hall of Famer is coming off both a Cy Young and World Series win for the Houston Astros. Verlander took a year off for Tommy John surgery, then returned to go 18 and 4 with a 175 ERA and 185 strikeouts and 175 innings. Now he goes to the Mets and reunites with his former mound mate on the Detroit Tigers, Max Scherzer, another future Hall of Famer. They're making the exact same amount of money, $87 million for two years. Both have been terrific guests on PTI but only Verlander can get us on Kinlock. As baseball approaches, the two biggest questions are one, how will the new rules play? And two, how will the Mets do? Maybe Scherzer can get us on the Bell Reeve. Who, who, who knows? Let me just say this, my over under for number of wins for them, as old as they are, I'm gonna go 37. Over under you great. with 37. That would be great. And by the way, it's only would a two be, hour drive to Kinlock. Happy anniversary, Anthony Davis. On this day seven years ago, while with the Pelicans, Davis scored 59 points in a 111-106 win over the Pistons. There's no question Davis is a great player. The question is, how often will he play? Davis has two nicknames devoted to his many absences. Anthony Street Clothes Davis and Anthony Dated Davis. Davis helped LeBron to a championship in the bubble playoffs, and he is having his most productive season yet with the Lakers. 26 points and 12 rebounds a game, but he's only played 35 of the Lakers' 59 games. Indeed, Davis has missed 111 of the Lakers' 284 games since he's been there, 38%, Mike. I know, Tony. Chicago kid, I root for him. Uh, gotten to know him. People don't really know Anthony Davis. He's a delight. And I hope he can stay healthy enough to just be in that mix in the postseason with LeBron, and let's see how it goes. I wish, wish him good health. Happy trails to Patrick Beverly's free agency. The veteran guard has taken his defensive prowess and his big yap to your Chicago Bulls after both the Lakers and Orlando dumped him. Beverly said he chose Chicago because, quote, I figured I could make a playoff push with the Bulls right now, kind of pop him up a little bit. The East is kind of weak. I'm excited, unquote. Beverly, 34, played 45 games for the Lakers, who he said he would lead to the Western Conference Finals. Your Bulls have lost six games in a row. They sit 11th in the East. Yeah. Beverly said of teammate Zach Levine, quote, I'm going to give him all the energy he needs. Destroy people, unquote. Does it ever occur to Beverly to stop talking? Ever. No, that, that's not why he's in this league. Agitation is why he's been around so long, Tony. He's not a star. But he may help his hometown team, another hometown guy, Yes, and by putting his foot in certain behinds in that locker room, and I think we right. all who follow right. that team know who I'm talking about. Would you rather have Lonzo Ball in that position, though, wouldn't you? Yes, I would, but we're not getting that. Okay. Yes, I would.
Let's go to the big finish. Former Spurs, Nuggets, and Vikings owner Red McCombs has died at 95. How will you remember him? Tony, he moved the Dallas Chaparrales in the ABA to San Antonio, and he was just an approachable owner you could go and talk to about any and everything. Players loved him like George Gervin. Yes, uh, yeah, there's a lot to remember. Kale McCarr of the Avalanche is in the concussion protocol for the second time in 11 days. That's, that's not good. No, and he's the team's third leading scorer. But if you, you know, that's a contact sport. You got to take care of yes. your health. That's the most important yeah. thing. The Nets extended Jock Vaughn through the 26 27 season. Wow, does that make sense? They got players, young ones worth developing, like Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson. Yes, it makes a lot of sense. Like that move. Women's College Hoops tonight, number six Iowa, number seven Maryland. You're going to drive 15 minutes to watch Kalen Clark, huh? No, I'm watching it on TV, though, because Maryland's got two pros, Diamond Miller and Abby Myers as well. Yeah, Kaylin yeah, Clark's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one. Number nine, Baylor at number 14, Kansas State tonight. Who you got? Baylor's got to keep pace with Kansas in a way in those rankings. I'm going to go with Baylor on the road, Tony. We're out of time. Trying to do that the next time. I believe it's Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras, people. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. And now, here's SportsCenter.